I feel utter gratitude to be welcomed onto this beautiful budja. As a new Australian, it is such a privilege. Um, and that is why I do care deeply about climate change. And clearly, so do you all. So, whatever works to address it, we should do. And if that means working with people with very different perspectives from ourselves, with open minds, from all sides, then excellent, because that's what I'm going to do. Because at this moment, I'm happy to wear the label of being a pragmatic progressive. But what does keep me awake at night is the fact that still today, around the world, hundreds of millions of people are still living in dire energy poverty. And those are the very same people who are going to be the worst impacted. By 2050, the world population is set to rise to over 9 billion people. Something has to give. All of us, over the last two years, have personally and confrontingly experienced just what the cost of climate change is going to look like. The world of money is most certainly paying attention now. So I think that's why we're here today, to explore how we can all develop an action plan that is both progressive and firmly grounded in what makes good business sense. Around the world, there is a cool-headed reassessment of the risks that are associated with climate change that is driving now a fundamental reshaping of the world of finance. Now, in my experience, financiers seldom ignore risks to their business because they know that if risks are to be managed effectively, they need to be understood. The swell of investors that are moving their money out of high-risk business and stranded assets is mounting. So, let's follow the money. So, where is the money going? Well, first, the money is definitely going into renewable energy. The pace of uptake of renewable energy is happening faster than it has for any other fuel in history, as identified by PP in their 2020 energy outlook. At the same time, as a consequence, the cost of those renewable technologies and energies is rapidly falling, making them highly cost competitive. And then there's another really rich bit to the story. There has been a parallel growth in the application and the dropping in cost of the smart, digitally connected technologies that we are going to need to integrate renewable energy into our energy systems, and guess what? To do it in a way that is affordable, reliable, and clean, which apparently we haven't been able to do. So, what does that all mean for us? Don't worry about the fossil fuel industries. Now, I know that for some of you, that might be a really shocking point. But the truth is, the fact is, that the money is running in the other direction into clean energy solutions more rapidly than anyone has predicted. And we now need to turn our energy into being focused on how we can accelerate that change. Be clear and set your goal. You can get and achieve your goal in many different ways. There are multiple pathways, which means you are going to have to make decisions, each and every one of us, whether we're a large business, a small business, or an individual. And that decision needs to be grounded in what makes sense to you. And there are many factors that are going to influence that. Your appetite for risk or your risk profile and where you are on your life journey. 
the pros and cons of the different technology options that you have in front of you, and actually what you're prepared to give up in order to have this thing, which is a sustainable, beautiful world. Let me give you some practical examples. Apple have set themselves the goal to be net zero carbon by 2030. And some of the ways that they are working to achieve this is, for example, working with the people that are providing the aluminium that goes into Apple's products and to work to have the aluminium smelter process carbon free. They are also looking to recycle all the content in Apple's products. That's going to have a disruptive effect on supply chains. BHP, a global mining energy company, have set themselves a goal to be, have their operational emissions at net zero carbon by 2050 and are working to do that through, for example, having their nickel operations operate from 100% renewable energy. And then the important piece in that story is that they then provide that nickel onto companies like Tesla, who use that nickel in the batteries that are so pervasive through our society now and will be fundamental to the renewable energy transition, and that go into electric vehicles like the one outside. Your family could set an action plan. In fact, I would urge you to do so. You could start by calculating what you think your family's and your carbon footprint is, and then work out practical strategies of how you as a family are going to work to reduce your carbon footprint. So that brings me to the final piece in the puzzle, which is the integration of industries. In the examples I just gave you of BHP and Apple, we've seen high-tech, manufacturing, mining, renewables, and transport. What happens in one sector flows into the others. That is a really powerful force for change. So, where are we? Well, great news. We are at an exciting place. We're going to face serious challenges and unintended consequences there always are consequences from any choice. But we have to manage them, and the tide has well and truly turned. It, global innovation and investment is pouring into clean energy solutions, and the green shoots are spreading. I wonder if some of you might be worried about being early jumpers and su suffering the negative consequences of being an early jumper. Well, can I urge you all to look again and reconsider? Because I think when you look closely, you may find that the negative consequences are far greater from not taking action faster now. All of you are deeply engaged, and that is why I am excited. All of you are already influencing business to put ethics and sustainability and business pragmatism firmly hand in hand and at the heart of their business. When I was a teenager, I was walking with my father in the West Bank, above Bethlehem, in the hills. Now, it was a family joke amongst my brothers and sisters how we could avoid going on a walk with our father because, much as we loved him, he did tend to wax long and lyrically about the wonders of architecture and engineering that we encountered. But let me tell you, on this day, he had me in the palm of his hands because my father was passionate about the environment and he was waxing lyrical about the utter ingenuity of the ancient Romans in designing their aqueducts to force water to run uphill, which might seem like nothing today, but was incredible. My father was devastated when Australia did not sign the Kyoto Agreement, and he died before he saw the Paris Agreement. So I am making this speech for him, 
But I would also say that I, I see the ingenuity at, in action everywhere I go. Last night, I was down in Albany talking with the community in Albany about their plans to build on their wonderful ocean energy resources and turn Albany into a global hub for excellence in ocean energy, aquaculture, farming, um, and to use all of their natural resources. And the community were right behind UWA, who were there supporting the Wave Energy Center. So I see it every day, wherever I go, that we in WA have so much ingenuity that we can bring. So I urge everyone to work on your own plan, but also work together. Thank you very much.